Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology and this year September 22nd, Rahu and Ketu are going to change signs. They are currently in Gemini and Sagittarius respectively and after six months, five months almost, they are going to change their signs and we know that they go retrograde. So Rahu will be entering the sign of Taurus from the sign of Gemini and Ketu will be entering Scorpio from Sagittarius. And because of this lockdown and the scare of the virus, many of you have requested me to make this video well in advance and suggest uh, specific remedies particular to each and every ascendant and therefore uh, this video uh, will be full of remedies, remedial measures, mantras and uh, sections of the scriptures which you should read like the Bhagavad Gita and the Srimad Bhagavatam. So by doing these remedies, I am very sure irrespective of whatever is there in your destiny, in your horoscope, in your dashas, you will be able to handle all the challenges and difficulties that will come or the good things which may come because sometimes if good things come and we are not in the right uh, mindset then we cannot enjoy them and if bad things happen to us and we are not in the right frame of mind we suffer more than we should suffer so therefore uh, in this video you will find all the remedies for all the 12 ascendants the lagnas the rising signs and uh, you can also see this from your moon sign so from your moon sign it can show you how it affects you mentally so you may ask me uh, why transit should be seen from uh, the ascendant and not from the moon sign so i have made that video long back so please watch that uh, before you uh, ask that question and uh, from the ascendant you see whichever is your ascendant all right and therefore Let's first understand before we go to the specific ascendance, uh, what is the theme of this transit. So the sign Taurus and uh, Scorpio, uh, these two are very crucial signs. In fact, they are one of the most crucial signs, I would say, two of the most. In fact, they are uh, primarily ignored sometimes. Scorpio is in the limelight, but Taurus is generally ignored for some reason. Well, you have to remember that Taurus is the sign where moon gets exalted and Scorpio is the sign where moon gets debilitated. So these two zodiac signs are very crucial. They are very important for us to uh, judge primarily from our mental perspective. So this transit, you not only should judge from the Lagna, you should also judge this from the moon sign. Okay. So externally from the ascendant you will see the results will manifest and from the moon sign you will see that you are getting affected mentally so therefore because these two signs are primarily related to the moon therefore this transit also should be seen from the moon okay but irrespective of that the primary results externally will be governed from the lagna that you will not find from the moon sign okay chandra rashi or rashi as they say in uh, vedic astrology so please see it from your lagna and apart from this uh, the main flavor of this transit is as i have written down in the presentation which i will show it to you uh, i have graded it as a uh, five into five categories so you you will see uh, after this transit uh, happens in september 22nd so the dates may vary. Some some are saying it is September 22nd. It's uh, 23rd for Tu Rahu, Min Rahu, Ketu, which, whichever you take. But essentially from end of September, you will start seeing the results. Okay, And the focus of this transit will be on creativity, intensity, food, depth and research. Okay, So you will see that uh, creativity will increase in this world because... Uh, Taurus zodiac sign has the nakshatra of Rohini, which is the nakshatra of creativity. So you will find that people are becoming more and more creative. So if you are into any creativity business or any work related to creativity, then it's a perfect time for you. And if you are planning to bring creativity to any of your existing uh, businesses you know, or any marketing skill, any new strategy, it's a very good time. 
to open new things it's a very good time then also scorpio uh, is the sign of intensity so you will see that uh, because of this creativity there will be intensity also <laughs> because ketu will be in scorpio so therefore you will see that um, intensity will increase throughout the world in every area it will happen in the area of spirituality also not only materialistic societies it will also happen within spiritual circles you will see people will be going deep into their spiritual practices they will be going deep into their sadhana into their meditation into uh, reading of the scriptures uh, they will also tend to go to go into secluded places secluded meditation will become more popular then also because taurus is the original second house is the sign of food so therefore you can conclude that uh, food industry will rise after this transit now of course currently the uh, food uh, the hotel industry uh, and hosp hospitality industry uh, tourism industry has been hit very badly but once this um, transit uh, happens you will see that these things will start coming up again and uh, because people will uh, people would have stayed in home for so long then they will feel that they will need to go and enjoy food outside more and therefore you will see there will be a big boom in the uh, hotel industry so if you are uh, running a hotel and if you are facing issues now i can understand but please be patient uh, your time will come <laughs> and then uh, scorpio is also the sign of death so you will see that whatever is going on in this world people will start going more deep within themselves they will uh, start to explore the uh, unheard zones the unexplored territories things which they never did they will start doing these things now because uh, now people will really feel that uh, because of this uh, virus or because of all the other deaths which has happened uh, people have realized that uh, superficially they cannot be just uh, hovering around in the material platform and they need to go deep into their spiritual practices so that they can be at the level of the soul and not get affected by it all right so therefore this transit is very crucial and the last thing i said is there will be a huge focus on research so you will see that uh, more and more research groups will open more and more people will start doing uh, different types of research and uh, they will want to do uh the new types of researches and also they will like to uh, furnish the existing forms of research which is already going on so there are many discussions about uh, uh vaccines and all other areas uh, which are developing in the in the uh, medical science and because scorpio is originally the eighth house so therefore and because it's ketu and ketu is also representing sharp things right so therefore uh you will see that uh many new new technologies will come up for medical science and people will start taking their health more seriously because now people are fearful of death more much more than ever they were because now they are seeing every day that uh this uh the, so many people are dying all right so the last thing is uh how will you know what happens to you okay so this video is a general video so you cannot expect that whatever i say will apply to you point point to point so suppose you are a sagittarius rising and i say these these things will be there so uh, do not freak out if things don't happen in your life because this is a general video for the for all the people of the world and don't forget that you have a individual horoscope okay so uh this these results will depend uh, to what extent uh, uh to what kind of a dasha you are running in your horoscope okay because uh, vedic astrology is dependent on dashas not on transits so primarily you have to check your dasha so if you are running rahu ketu's maha dasha or antar dasha during these one and half year so uh, rahu ketu will stay for one and half years in one sign from september to the next 18 months so if you are running mahadasha or antardasha of rahu ketu or any planet which is conjunct rahu ketu then you will feel that these results are becoming more and more vivid in your life okay and to which area will you face these uh, that will depend on your ascendant and that's where i will start the presentation okay so 
uh, have a good time do the remedies and don't panic don't uh, don't think too much don't uh, keep thinking that uh, everything is under lockdown do what you can and uh, let's pray to god that things improve all right so now i will be sharing the screen so okay therefore let's start so let's go to aries ascendance first all right so if you go to aries and uh, here i have uh, written down certain mantras so i will zoom in uh, but before that i would like to give some explanation so there are certain mantras which i had mentioned so uh, these are mantras which uh, the respective ascendants should do okay so for example if you go to virgo you will see vishnu sahasranam is there then there is om namo bhagavate narasimhaya then there is hare krishna maha mantra so but here you will see there is something called as purna mantra also okay so what is this purna mantra i have written it down here all right so this purna mantra is a very special mantra actually this refers to lord vishnu okay so these are all uh, vishnu mantras very powerful very potent uh, and therefore uh, if you do these mantras every day as i have written here 108 times each in mala okay so therefore uh, it will be very good for you now uh, this vishnu sahasra naam is not a mantra it is uh, thousand names of lord vishnu so you cannot you don't need to chant that 108 times you just need to do it once okay so vishnu sahasra naam is only once and all the other things are mantras so these you have to chant 108 times you must have a mala a bead okay in one mala you have to chant so please do not chant in hands or in counters by counting in fingers don't use your mobile okay please chant only in mala that is mandatory when you are, whenever you are chanting mantras it is very uh, essential that you are doing it in mala okay so now uh, this purna mantra i have written it down now uh, this is a bit difficult for the westerners to pronounce but i will paste it down in the description section so that uh, you can uh, chant it without any difficulty om apavitro pavitro va sarvavastham gato api va yasmare pundari kaacham sa bahaya abhyantara suchi this mantra is very 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 important this is a mantra for cleansing actually all right and then we have the hare krishna maha mantra because it's a long mantra so i have just written the name here and i have not mentioned the entire mantra but this mantra also you have to chant 108 times and also the purna mantra also okay wherever this is mentioned for whichever ascended so this mantra is hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare okay so now let us start as per ascendant so the first ascendant is of course aries so i'll put it here in the center so for aries ascendants uh, you you see that this rahu will transit in your second house okay number 2 rahu transits in your second house and ketu shall transit in your eighth house so therefore this transit is very crucial for your 2 8 axis so if you are running rahu ketu's mahadasha antardasha or your uh, dasha planets are sitting in the second or eighth or uh, they are lording the second or the eighth then this transit will be very important for you okay and uh, because rahu is entering the second house of finances so therefore this is a very good time to work on your finances new new opportunities for finances can open up depending on your dashas of course and uh, because ketu is transiting the eighth house so eighth house shows the money of others the in laws okay if you are married or it can show uh, we are getting inheritance from your family members or it can show insurance money it can show pf or um, anything which you have not worked for but you somehow got it okay it's unearned money it can show lottery also so uh, because ketu is transiting there it it could be a good time to uh, not think much on the money or the wealth of others and concentrate more on your own wealth which is your second house where rahu is okay but that's the fact that wherever ketu transits you get the temptation there because you get confused so you may invest too much in into lotteries and you may get into trouble so be very careful when you take loans 
or when you uh, use the money of your relatives or family members or friends or your spouse also this is also the money of uh, resources of your spouse because eighth house is the second from the seventh seventh is the house of marriage so because rahu's transit is happening in the second house so therefore uh, it's a good time to focus on your family and uh, to do things for your family rather than expecting them to do things for you okay so wherever rahu goes there's an expectation always so if you do for your family then you will see that uh, your family life will improve okay but if you keep expecting that they should do for us then you may see that uh, there are troubles created in your family life okay so uh, focus on your own family your own wealth and by that you will see that your life changes actually and become more creative remember these buzzwords creativity intensity food depth and research okay so whatever you are doing suppose you are doing some spiritual practices in your family you do it with more sincerity and uh, if you are into any kind of business partnership with some of your relatives or family members then you also you can uh, uh, you can do it more seriously you can uh, find newer and newer creative ways to expand uh, your business okay or if you are searching for a job that time it could be a good opportunity for you to apply for the job so therefore the remedies that you should do is uh, the first mantra which you should do is om namo narayanaya this is a mantra that i have written down okay then the next mantra is om namo bhagavate vasudevaya and then this purna mantra is there okay so purna mantra i am showing it again om apavitro pavitro va sarva avastham gato piva yas mare pundari kaacham sa bhayam abhayantara suchi so this is the purna mantra which you should chant okay so you need to chant uh, these three mantras for uh, 108 times each okay in the mala as i said and apart from this uh, the fourth remedy is you should read the second canto of the shrimad bhagavatam and the eighth canto of shrimad bhagavatam the second canto detail gives a lot of detail about creation and therefore this will uh, really help you to understand if you are planning to have a new creative venture you will get an idea of how the universal creation works how things are structured who is taking care of what okay and eighth house also has the past time of bali maharaj in shrimad bhagavatam where he gave a promise and then later on he lost everything and then he gained back so much so the eighth canto will help you to deal with reversals in life okay so for you it's very crucial that you read the second canto and the eighth canto okay so therefore uh, these are the remedies which you should do all right so now let us go to taurus ascendance so for taurus uh, this transit is happening in your ascendant itself and rahu will be in your first house and ketu will be in your seventh house okay and uh, therefore this is a good time for you to figure out what what do you actually want in life so if you are running the dasha of venus especially or mars this will be very crucial because uh, uh venus is your lagnesh and mars is your seventh lord so therefore <clears throat> this is a very good time to actually uh, figure out <clears throat> to what extent do you want happiness pleasure prosperity name fame in your life because <clears throat> sorry rahu deals with all these things okay so wherever rahu goes there can be a sense of obsession within that okay <clears throat> so because it's transiting the ascendant it's a good time to work on your health on your appearance on your uh, intelligence basically so therefore if uh, if you feel that you lack clarity in your life you do not know what you should do in life then this is the perfect time for you to <coughs> yeah so this is the perfect time for you to go ahead and figure out with the help of a guru a guide or a counselor or astrologer what is that which you want in life what is that which you 
should be doing this is a time to get clear focus in life this is a time to get a clear direction in life this is a time when uh, you should get the proper understanding of each and every area of your life because the ascendant controls each and every house okay of your uh, of your uh, horoscope so therefore uh, if you feel that there is some area in your life which you do not have clarity upon then therefore this is the best time that you work on that area okay and then you also try to understand why are you lacking so approach a guru or a counselor or a guide or an astrologer and take the right guidance and this is the time that you have to focus on yourself rather than thinking what others are doing because ketu is transiting in the seventh house so therefore if you are married already then this is a good time to withdraw from your marriage withdraw doesn't mean you leave your spouse you divorce or you have a breakup it means that you stay in the marriage but then you withdraw your withdraw your focus up to yourself for some time and then you check how am i doing myself without the partner so if you are happy yourself without a partner then you will also be happy with the partner and if you are unhappy yourself without the partner then you will also be unhappy when you are with somebody else so therefore if you have seen that you have had repeated failures in relationships you, know, you have tried everything but still it has not worked or uh, due to some other reason your marriage did not work or uh, your uh, relationships don't work or any human relationship then uh, this could be a good time these 18 months to focus and see that what what am i doing wrong because of which uh, my relationships are not working because uh, always remember that uh, if a relationship breaks it is not always that it's the fault of the other party okay so we feel that oh it's fault of somebody else that is how the ego cheats us so it is always two sided remember so you have to you have to check that why am i not able to sustain my relationships what is there which i am not doing from my side because of which my relationships are not working okay now even if you have done everything you feel and then even if it's not working then it's not your fault but this is a good time for introspection so go within go deep down inside and uh, try to check what are the things that you should be doing properly okay and uh, this is a time to have a reality check on every area of your life and so for you uh, you should be reading the first canto of shrimad bhagavatam and you should read the seventh canto the first canto is very impressive because it is the introduction to the shrimad bhagavatam and then we have the seventh canto where we have lots of interesting stories we especially have the story of uh, Prahlad Maharaj in the seventh canto, okay, of Hiranya Kashyapu also. So those stories you must read. And first canto contains different questions like, ah, uh, what should be a dying man do? Okay, so not that you are going to die, but uh, you will always die one day, right? So therefore, it's a good time if you read the first canto. So apart from that uh, you should recite these three mantras 108 times okay so for you you should recite the purna mantra then you should recite the hare krishna maha mantra then you should recite the om namo bhagavate narasimhaya this mantra okay this is a mantra for lord narsing dev it's very important for you to recite so i will go down and show you the purna mantra uh, once again So Purna Mantra is Om Apavitro Pavitro Va Sarva Vastham Gata Upiva Yas Maret Pundari Kacham Sa Bhaya Bhaya Suchi Sa Bhaya Sa Bhaya Abhayan Tara Suchi and the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare So these are the two mantras and Lord Narsingh Dev's mantra that you should recite. Okay. So my good wishes to all the Taurus ascendants and now we. let's move on to gemini so for gemini it is happening in the 12th house and the 6th house <clears throat> so therefore rahu transits your 12th house 12th house of seclusion loneliness foreign lands uh therefore this is a good time if you are planning to go abroad for pursuing your higher studies or 
for a trip or if you are if you are uh, born in a western country and if you plan to visit india uh, to go to some ashram or uh, any part of the world or to visit some buddhist monasteries it's a very good time and this is a this is a time where you should realize that uh, you should uh, do the expenses which are necessary only okay so this means that uh, because rahu is transiting your 12th house i mean it will transit so therefore you could get uh, you could get a feeling that you need to always keep spending so wherever rahu transits he gives a sense of obsession there okay so therefore uh, you must understand that um, even if you have expenses uh, don't don't make it a wasteful expenditure okay so make sure that you have the right expenses and therefore for you it's very crucial that you do proper meditation all right so therefore uh, you should do meditation at least half an hour a day every day morning and apart from that uh, you should also understand that ketu is transiting in your sixth house okay so because ketu transits in the sixth house you you could get a feel that your uh, daily schedule has been quite uh, disrupted and because of that you may feel that uh, there is a sense of confusion what should you do every day it's like uh, uh, the current situation of lockdown so people are sitting in their home but they are not aware of what to do okay so therefore this is a good time to actually figure out that what kind of things should you put in your schedule every day what kind of things that you should uh, do so that you can uh, incorporate your uh, activities how can you prioritize your activities to your lifestyle okay so sixth house is also the house of health so some certain health issues could be there if you are not careful so therefore you should have a good lifestyle a balanced lifestyle a sattvic lifestyle and you should do surya namaskar every day so doing surya namaskar is a very big remedy for uh, ketu transiting the sixth house all right it's very 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 very, very crucial and <coughs> Uh, once you do surya namaskar then you will also feel that your body has been streamlined so therefore uh, also because of rahu's transit in 12th house you may have this tendency to uh, graze too much on your uh, mobile uh, during your sleep time okay so therefore uh, make sure that you do not waste too much time uh, by uh, sleeping or uh by staying awake late in the night okay because rahu transits the tw uh, 12th house so therefore rahu is tamagur so therefore you may feel that when you are about to sleep uh, a lot of negative thoughts are coming okay in your head so whenever negative thoughts are coming uh, in your head so what you should do you should chant this mantra no? om namo narayana this mantra you must chant and then you must chant om namo bhagavate vasudevaya all right so then you should chant the vishnu sahasra naam which is a glorification of lord vishnu thousand names okay so uh, one beautiful thing you can do is uh, you can chant the vishnu sahasra naam in the morning and these two mantras in the morning apart from doing surya namaskar and meditation and during sleep if you are feeling restless and you don't get sleep then it's a very good time to uh, you can keep playing the vishnu sahasra naam on in the background and you can let it keep playing uh, in the background all night okay uh, in rewind mode so then you will feel that there are divine vibrations in your home and uh, you will be able to sleep better and because you will be able to sleep better so uh, then you will feel that your sixth house which is your daily work you are rejuvenated you are powerful you are focused and you are able to do things properly all right so you could keep playing the vishnu sahasra naam in the background or any of these two mantras okay so chant these mantras and read the vishnu sahasra naam once in the morning it will do re, it will do wonders for you so my good wishes to all the gemini ascendants now let us move on to cancer karaka rashi karaka lagna okay cancer lagna cancer rising so rahu is transiting your <coughs> 11th house and ketu will transit your 5th house okay and uh, therefore because rahu transits the 11th house you will see that uh, 
you will be meeting so many people and it might happen that these people who you meet in these one and a half years you won't meet them again later on not necessarily always but i have seen whenever rahu transits 11th this happens so now this is a great time to make new connections this is a great time to uh, make new contacts it's a great time to understand that uh, you really need to play it big now so therefore for cancer ascendance if you have big plans if you have a plan of plan of opening a startup then it's a good time to uh, open uh, you will get new new ideas from your friend circles okay uh, 11th house is also the house of your elder sibling so if you have a elder sibling then you can uh, also try to develop a good relationship with that sibling okay and you can get uh, good connections through that elder sibling and it could happen that because it's rahu and rahu represents foreign things you meet a lot of people who are from a different uh, religion or caste creed or social background family background language background so it's a good time for you to explore the horizon learn new things uh, become more creative because uh, it's the sign of taurus after all so therefore it's a very good time for you to focus on networking and at the same time because ketu is transiting the fifth house fifth house represents the things which you like yourself all right so therefore due to this transit you might sometimes feel that you might have to sacrifice certain things from your life not that uh, you sacrifice everything that you like okay for pleasing others but it could happen and this could turn out to be good for you that uh, there are certain things which you like so suppose you like to go to a particular place and you don't like to go to another place so it can happen that your friend circle is requesting you that uh, please let's go to that place so if you don't go out there you could you know maybe miss out on uh, the uh, the friend circle so unless your friends are into degraded activities like uh, drinking smoking or uh, illicit sex or pornography or something like this then you should understand that uh, now you should uh, during this transit depending on your dashas you should keep your uh, likes and dislikes secondary and you should uh, prioritize what others want okay and when i say you should prioritize what others want i don't mean to say that uh, you put yourself in trouble and you go and keep pleasing everybody no i am not saying that but this time go and give yourself fully exert yourself fully put yourself out in the open and try to see how you can mix with others how you can how you can incorporate others into your lifestyle so that is something which is very crucial because if rahu transits kama houses like the 11th house then there is like a outburst of people and uh, different desires which you feel okay so if you are planning to uh, ask for a promotion or a raise it's a perfect time it's a very good time to do that so go ahead and do and if you want to open some joint venture then also it's a very good time okay and for you the remedies are om namo bhagavate vasudevaya and om namo bhagavate narasimhaya and the purna mantra okay so the purna mantra is down i hope you have noted it down but in case you have not noted so then this is the mantra okay om apavitro pavitro va sarvavastham gatopi va yas mare pundari kaacham sa bahya abhyantara suchi this is the mantra okay so for cancer uh, you need to chant these three mantras and you should also read the 11th canto uh, uddhav gita is there in the 11th canto of shrimad bhagavatam and you should also read the 5th canto 5th canto as a description of all the cosmic orders okay so all the different planetary systems in the 5th canto it is there so wish you all the best to uh, good luck to all the cancer ascendants now let us go to simha simha lagna leo lagna leo rising okay <coughs> so rahu is transiting in your 10th house and ketu will transit in your 4th house therefore 10th house is the midheaven it is where the sun is giving the noon 
So this is Rahu's most favorite position. Why? Because Rahu's most favorite job is to uh, eclipse the sun and moon. So therefore, uh, Rahu can eclipse the sun and moon here. Why do I say that? Because the sun gets big belly in the 10th house. Okay, And Rahu wants to uh, be the king actually. That is why he drank the Amrit actually. Because he wanted to become immortal. So therefore this is the best position. Leo rising, Leo lagna, Leo ascendance. Right? This is the best time for you to show to the entire world that there is nothing which you cannot do. So take the name of Ram and go and achieve your targets. Okay, so first remedy for you is that you should do Surya Namaskar every day without fail. You must do that. And once you do Surya Namaskar, you should do uh, Pranayam because, because it's the 10th house. So they can, you may feel that there is like too much energy inside you. Okay. So therefore you should understand that uh, too much energy is only good if you utilize it properly. Okay. So, after you do your Surya Namaskar and your uh, Pranayam, then the first thing you should do is you should chant these mantras, okay? So, I will discuss the mantras later. But, uh, it's very crucial that you have a proper schedule and do not waste these 18 months, okay? So, these 18 months are very crucial. Remember, this will come only after 18 years again. So, if you plan to resign from your company and uh, start your uh, start your own company this is the best time 10th house is the house of name fame status career power position authority okay and uh, if you plan to get a promotion this is a very good time or shift the uh, company and go to the next level it's a very good time to take up some managerial responsibility it's a very good time uh, and K2 is transiting in your fourth house. So therefore, it might happen that uh, because of uh, large big things which you should do, which you need to do or which you might need to do in the outer world, in the external realm, uh, you might feel that uh, there are certain things inside your home or in your inner chambers which you are not able to accomplish, okay? So, in the name of uh, doing things externally, uh, don't forget that you also need happiness internally. Okay. So, therefore, uh, during this time, uh, you, you might, your internal activities, your family, your home, your mother, your uh, inner chambers may be in the back foot. Remember that. But uh, don't neglect them. Don't become irresponsible towards your family members. Okay. And don't disrespect them and don't think that you are the king because uh, only God is the king. Okay, he is the original king. So he was, he is and he will be the king. So therefore, uh, remember that uh, you have a very good time now depending on your dashas to implement the actions that you want, that you always wanted. So now is the time. Go ahead and rise high up in the sky like the sun is at noon. It's like fully there out in the sky all right so now for you uh, the mantras are purna mantra and the hare krishna maha mantra and om namo bhagavate shri vamanaya this is the mantra for vaman dev very important vaman dev is the in one of the incarnations of lord vishnu and apart from that you should read the 10th canto of Srimad bhagavatam and the fourth canto also so 10th canto is very crucial because it contains the pastimes of Lord Krishna. Okay, and Srimad Bhagavatam says, Ete cha kala pum sam krishna astu bhagavan swayam. So therefore, please read these two cantos. It's very crucial so that you can know, like if you see Lord Krishna's life, read the Bhagavad Gita and understand like he did so many big things. Now, even if you don't consider that he was God, but you consider him as a, a big ruler or a leader or a politician, or a change maker. So then you know he established Yudhishthira Maharaj in the throne of Hastinapur and then he uh, killed all the, I mean, through Arjuna and Bhim and he killed all the Kurus uh, who were pillars of sinful life and Adharma. So now is the time that you uh, throw all the negativity from your life and the universe and become more positive, okay? So the Puna Mantra is here. It's down here. 
ओम अपवित्र पवित्रो वर्वावस्थम गतोपि वा यह स्मरे पुंदरी काक्षम सा बाह्य अभ्यंतर सूची एंड द हरे कृष्ण महामंत्र इस हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे राइट सो लियो असेंडेंस दीज थ्री मंत्र इंक्लूडिंग ओम नमो भगवते श्री वामनाय सो प्लीज डू नॉट फॉरगेट ऑल राइट सो माय गुड लक टू ऑल दियो असेंडेंस नाउ लेट अस गो टू वर्गो Virgo rising, Virgo lagna. Okay. <coughs> so the first thing is uh, Rahu transits your ninth house, and Ketu transits your third house. So very interesting transit. The three nine axis is getting activated, and for you it's very 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 crucial that you. And read the Ramayan. The Ramayan is a very big remedy for you because ninth house is the house of dharma, and Lord Ram is Maryada Purushottam. He is the follower. Uh, he is the perfect example of one who follows uh, religious and spiritual principles, moral codes. So, therefore, uh, reading the Ramayan is very very crucial for you. Doing Surya Namaskar is another remedy for you. and ninth house shows gurus and teachers and guides counselors so therefore now is the best time that you go and take guidance counseling and advice from your gurus you could go to an astrologer or a life coach or a career counselor depending on your dashas your dashas will tell you which is that area uh, where you will go and take counseling consulting from okay so ninth house transit of rahu is very interesting because rahu doesn't like the ninth house but still when he goes there he figures out new new ways to learn things okay so it could happen that you are uh, learning things online okay uh, unconventionally it could happen that your guru is from a different culture or different religion different uh ethnic background your language may be different your food food habits may be different your sunrise sunset times may be different and because of that uh you may feel that you are learning so much more uh, than what you would have learned traditionally all right and third house is the house of uh, upadesh especially giving advice okay and ketu is transiting there so now ketu is telling you that before you give advice to others make sure you yourself follow it okay <clears throat> so therefore you should understand that these 18 months it's best for you to take advice from others listen to others and not give your own advice to others okay you could do that there's nothing wrong with that but when ketu transits the third house you can feel that the suggestions and the advice which you are giving to others they are not uh, nobody is taking your advice okay or nobody is taking you seriously uh, in uh, when it comes to uh, advice so therefore this is the best the best thing to do for you during this time is that you focus on yourself ninth house shows um, higher education so if you are planning to do a masters degree or a phd or a post doc this is the best time trust me to do that and also if you are uh, if you feel that you need help then uh, approach anybody any senior okay within your college your university or school or your company so approach them and take necessary help take the necessary precautions which you should take when you uh, take a risk okay so take calculated risks don't take unnecessary risk and uh, you can also read the ninth canto of shrimad bhagavatam but ninth canto and the ramayana are almost the same okay so either you can read shrimad bhagavatam ninth canto or the ramayana okay uh, ram charit manas uh, then you have this valmiki ramayana okay and uh, doing surya namaskar is very crucial for you and vishnu sahasranam is very important so vishnu sahasranam Uh, you can uh, read once it will take you almost half an hour to do in the morning <clears throat> and then you need to chant this mantra for lord narsingh dev okay om namo bhagavate narasimhaya 108 times vishnu sahasranam you do once 
total and then nursing this mantra you do then uh, 108 times in the mala and then you do the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. The Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, I have written it here. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. All right. So, Virgo Ascendance, these are the things that you should do and uh, take guidance whenever required and my best wishes to all the Virgo Ascendants. All right. So now, let's go to Libra Ascendance. Okay, let's go to Libra Ascendance now and I will share the screen again. Okay. Alright, so for Libra Ascendance, this transit will happen in your 8th house. And Ketu will transit in your 2nd house. Alright, so this is a very crucial transit for you because uh, your yoga karaka saturn which is in your uh, fourth house actually hmm, so it is giving you shasha mahapurush yoga and therefore if you combine this transit of rahu uh, in the eighth house with the power of saturn this will be very good and also ketu transits your second house so now, 8th house, as I had written here uh, in the focus area, that creativity, intensity, food, depth, and research. So now is the time that you will realize that there are things which are much deeper than you expected. So <clears throat> there are certain areas of your life, depending on your dashas, where you might feel that you are on the surface and you need to go into the depth of the ocean because eighth house is the original sign of Scorpio. So this is a good time actually to see how much inner substance do you have inside? How much, how much tolerance do you have? How much patience do you have? How much faith do you have in the divinity? How much how many reversals, how, how, how do you take reversals in life? Okay. So, therefore, when Rahu transits the 8th house, it's a good time to explore newer horizons when you feel, so, if your dashas are indicating that certain things are not working the way you are expecting them to be, then you can figure out that how, how differently can I do these things? And if things are working the way you want them to, then you can see that how can I expand the different horizons. And even if things are working out for you the way you want, remember that this is the eighth house. So therefore, always keep a reality check on things. And if things are not turning, don't always be negative. Don't curse yourself. Don't think that uh, you're not good enough. Okay. So you have tried your best. and you are still trying your best. So, it can happen that your best is not the best always. Okay. So I repeat, your best need not be the best. So, therefore, try your best and leave the rest to God. And because eighth house is the money of other people in law, so you might, you might feel that uh, there's a big focus on uh, the money like insurance or PF or lottery or anything like that. And there could be a sense of disconnect from your family members because uh, Ketu transits your second house and you may feel that you might have to do certain things which they may not appreciate now. But hold on, keep doing them. Later on, they will appreciate. So if they are not appreciating you in the face, uh, don't think that they are your enemies. Don't uh, go and fight with them. All right? And reading the 8th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam is very crucial for you. The story of Bali Maharaj is very important. Second canto also creation is very important for you. And apart from that, Om Namo Narayanaya. 108 times you should chant. Then Om Namo Bhagavate Shri Vamanaya. This is Vamandev's mantra specifically for you. It's very, 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 very crucial. Then you should chant the Puna mantra. Okay, Puna mantra is here. If you can see. Om Apavitra Pavitrova Sarva Vastham Gato Apiva 
Kundari Kaksham Sa Bahya Abhayanta Suchi. Right? So, my good wishes to all the Libra ascendants. Now, let us go to Scorpio. Vrishtik Rashi, Vrishtik Lagan. So, for Scorpio, this transit is happening in your seventh house and Ketu will transit in your ascendant, rising sign. All right. So, Therefore, very important transit. The 17 axis is getting activated for you. And the 17 axis is a very beautiful axis because it gives you a reality check to see uh, how are you figuring with the rest of the world. So, therefore, at times you may feel that you are focusing too much on others, and that could be required sometimes. But always remember that uh, your relations, the relationship which you have with others, is a is a reflection of the relationship that you have with yourself. So therefore, uh, focus on yourself also at times. Don't just uh, go and focus only on the life of others. You should avoid gossiping too much. And if you are not married, then uh, this could be a good time to get married. And depending on your dashas, uh, you, you might meet uh, somebody from a different uh, caste, creed, community, religion, and you might get married to that person. Now, if your dashas indicate that provided, because Rahu transits in seventh, uh, transiting in seventh house can give uh, uh, marriages from different uh, societies, and uh, because K two transits the ascendant, so you might feel that uh, you have developed yourself enough, and now you need to explore other people. So that is a good thing to do, provided you have control over yourself. Self control, sense control is very important in your case. Okay. So, therefore, uh, in that case, uh, you have to understand that it is not bad to focus on others. Uh, it is good uh, if, if it helps you and if you are happy and satisfied within yourself, then you can always uh, shift your focus from yourself to others. And if you are already married, it's a very good time to focus on your marriage. To build that team because of which you might feel that uh, now my marriage will improve. Okay, so if you are married, it's a great time to improve your married life. All right, and apart from that, uh, seventh house represents connections with other people in general. So therefore, if you feel that you are not so having a good social life, then now is the time that you step out of your home and you try to make those connections which you should make. Okay. And because K2 transits your ascendant, so you might have this tendency uh, if your dasha indicates that uh, you're not staying at home, you, you're not staying with yourself, you're just going around uh, meeting others, meeting people. So that is also not good. So uh, you should do the necessary uh, meditation and uh, pranayam. That is very important for you. Okay. So. For you, reading the seventh canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, the story of Prahlad Maharaj is very crucial actually. If you read that, then you will know how uh, how Prahlad had faced so many obstacles. Okay? And seventh house also represents obstacles and enemies, open enemies. So, uh, if you are running uh, difficult dashas of planets like uh, Mars placed in the eighth house or the tenth house, or any planet in the eighth or the twelfth, then it could happen that your anger is rising and you are not able to control yourself and you have a tendency to blast on uh, uh, blast on others. So make sure you do not act in ways which you might regret later. Okay. So always act properly because when Rahu transits the seventh, you might you may get an obsession of uh, controlling others or uh, uh, trying to prove to somebody that you are superior to them or expecting them uh, to be the way you want them to be. Okay, So let them be themselves and you be yourself. So you focus on yourself and let me focus on themselves. Okay, So for you, the remedies are uh, the first mantra that you should chant is Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. This is very important. Then you should chant the Puna Mantra. Then you should chant Om Namo Bhagavate Narasimhaya. This is mantra for Lord Nursing Day. Okay, very, very, very crucial. So the Puna Mantra is here. I have uh, noted it down here. Om Apavit 
पवित्रो अपवित्र पवित्रो वा सर्व अवस्थम गिवा यमरे कुंडली काम सब आया अभ्यंतर सूची so my good wishes to all these for your ascendants now let us move on to sagittarius dhanu rashi dhanu lagna now for sagittarius rahu is transiting your 6th uh, house and uh, ketu is transiting your 12th house okay 6 12 axis so sixth house a very good house for rahu to go in and because it's a dusthana and a upachaya and rahu is a malefic so malefics do very good in the sixth house so 10th house is also a very good place for rahu and so is the sixth house in fact they say sixth house is equally good like for leo it's in the 10th for you it's in the 6th so this is also like the best placement for you so now is the time that you actually work on obstacles okay so not that obstacles will come but you should see yourself what are the obstacles which might come in your life what are the obstacles you should uh, you should not ignore so maybe your health is not very good so you should focus on your health you should focus uh, on uh, taking on newer and newer ways to improve your health so suppose uh, in your horoscope you see that uh, Uh, sun is very strong then it could happen that uh, the standard allopathic medicines work for you but if you see saturn is more strong then it could happen that uh, ayurveda works more for you if you see that moon is more strong then you could feel that uh, then you may experience that homeopathy works more for you okay so hit the gym do yoga uh, focus on your daily routine sixth house is daily routine okay and the problem is if you don't focus in this then the 12th house will get affected where k2 is and 12th house is sleep so you'll always see if you just waste uh, your day doing nothing then when the time comes to sleep you won't get sleep and that will give you sleep ap sleep apnea or insomnia or panic attacks anxiety your cortisol will increase okay so eat good food 6th house is also health it is also diet so eat good food don't eat too many fried items don't eat too much sugar so these things will uh, create difficulty for you and at the same time don't become too much obsessed also with your health so if rahu goes into six it can happen you know that suddenly you say that oh i will stop eating from tomorrow or you may say that oh uh, i i will uh, I, i will not stay here because here the food is not good. so don't make abrupt decisions make uh, take sit down and think properly what is required it required take uh, guidance from a doctor or a dietitian or a health expert okay and it's also the house of job daily routine so if you are planning for a promotion it's a very good time go and get it and if your dashas are indicating you will get a promotion and of course uh, because ketu is in the 12th so therefore it is very crucial that you do meditation it's very very crucial otherwise uh, you could feel that you have done so many things in the day because of rahu being in the six but when you are going to sleep you feel uh, that what was the use of doing all this okay so therefore uh, always remember that uh, if you cannot sleep in the night it is because your day has not been very good okay so therefore do good activities during the day and take proper sleep also at least 6 to 7 hours or if required 8 hours also okay so don't compromise on your sleep don't think that you have to keep working all the time so don't uh, ruin your health like that okay so for you the remedy is uh, vishnu sastra naam thousand names of vishnu once you chant it is very good then om namo bhagavate narasimhaya is very 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 important for you and the hari krishna maha mantra is very important for you so the hari krishna maha mantra is listed down here you can see here This is Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. All right. So two mantras and the Vishnu Sastra Nam once in the morning, and apart from that, you can read the sixth canto of Shrimad Bhagavatam, where the story of Ajamil is there. So Ajamil's story is very crucial, and twelfth canto is also very important because twelfth canto contains your uh, predictions about Kali Yuga. So these two things are very good if you read and. apart from that uh, if you uh, are a non vegetarian then it's good if you turn into a vegetarian 
because uh, if Rahu transits the sixth and you are eating too much meat, or even if you are eating any, any in any quantity, then it might happen that you get uh, diseases. Okay, so it's not very good to kill animals. So best is we become a vegetarian. Okay, so try uh, if you chant these mantras. Uh, I'm very sure within three to six months you can become a vegetarian. Okay, so wish you all the best to. Uh, all the Sagittarius rising, Lagna, all the best. Now let us go to Capricorn. Capricorn, very interesting transit. Rahu is transiting the fifth house and Ketu transits the eleventh. This transit is perfectly summed up by saying that you have fought enough, <laughs> you have conquered enough, you have proved yourself. You have done everything that you should have done or you needed to do when Rahu was in your sixth. And now Rahu has entered your fifth house. Fifth house is you yourself. All right. So for the first time in your life, focus on what you are, who you are. What are the things that you like? What do you want to do in life? What are the things that make you happy? Fifth house is the most important house of the zodiac because it gives you a reason to get up in the morning all right so fifth house is very 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 crucial because it is also the house of mantras so therefore if uh, rahu transits the fifth house it is very crucial that you take up some new hobby take up some creative work which you like to do so ask yourself go back to your childhood and see what are the things that you like to do did you like singing dancing painting or what are the things that you like actually so if you if you pay heed to the things that you actually like then you will realize that now also you can do them and fifth house is also the house of uh, love romance creativity so if your dashas are indicating then it might happen that you are uh, run into a love affair or uh, you might also get married if the seventh house is involved your love can be now converted to marriage or it might happen you might meet a new person and then you might fall in love and then you might get married so all possibilities could be there and because it is rahu if your dashas indicate providing conditions apply then it could happen that the person you uh, end up meeting is from a different uh, religion or culture or queen background so that could be there or it could be bit, uh, it could be unconventional relationship there could be some age difference depending on the dasha planets if saturn is involved then that could be there okay and ketu in the 11th it's good to with, withdraw from your social circles now if you have a hobby and you want to do it together with others then do it but you should give priority to yourself Okay, so don't just go and join some random center, some random club. First, figure out what you want, what you like to do. So if you're married, happy, this is the best time to have children. Fifth house is the house of children, all right? So very good time for you if you want to take Diksha from a guru. Fifth house is the house of Diksha, initiation, guru. If you want to accept a subordinate, it is a very good time. Fifth house is the house of subordinates. If you are having children, then it's a very good time to improve your relationship with your children. Okay. And as a part of remedies for you, uh, Om Namo Narayanaya is very important for you. Then Om Namo Bhagavate Narasimhaya. Then Om Namo Bhagavate Shri Vamanaya because Jupiter is the Karaka for the fifth house. And the 11th house also. So for you, Om Namo Bhagavate Shri Bhamanaya is the most important mantra because uh, Jupiter, uh, the uh, Vishnu avatar for the for planet Jupiter is Vamandev. And this mantra is for Vamandev. Okay. So therefore, uh, chant these mantras 108 times every day. Uh, all the three mantras and read the fifth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. There is the creation of the universe, the different planetary systems are mentioned in the fifth canto. And 11th canto has Uddhav Gita. Okay, so we have Bhagavad Gita, then there is Uddhav Gita. Uddhav Gita was spoken by Lord Krishna to his uh, friend Uddhav. Like Bhagavad Gita was spoken by Krishna to Arjuna. So, therefore, uh, the fifth canto is very important.
and uh, 11th canto also so you can also read the bhagavad gita because 11th canto and bhagavad gita are very similar so uddhav gita and bhagavad gita are almost the same so you can read both okay and fifth house is also the house of disciple and arjuna and uddhav they were like krishna's disciples so now is a very good time to connect to your gurus uh, take knowledge from them and learn and impart your knowledge to uh, impart their knowledge to your subordinates okay so that's a very beautiful uh, placement actually so congratulations and my good wishes to all the capricorn ascendants okay now let us go to aquarius so for aquarius this transit is happening in your 410 axis so 410 axis so <clears throat> for you rahu is transiting in your fourth house and then ketu will transit in your 10th house so rahu transits the fourth house this is the house where moon gets digbali and 10th house is the house where sun gets digbali so it's a very interesting phenomena that now rahu is going and sitting in the house where uh, moon is the most powerful okay so therefore during this transit you should really focus on your home you should really focus on your inner chambers your inner peace you should focus on learning education because fourth house is a very important house many times it is ignored many times people think it's the house of property or vehicles or luxuries yeah of course it is uh, but uh, primarily it's the house of mental peace and knowledge and if you have the right knowledge about the things that you are doing in this world then you will be very happy okay and ketu is transiting in your 10th house so therefore when ketu transits the 10th house it doesn't mean that you stop working it doesn't mean that you uh, get out of your office or you don't go to your office or you go to the forest it means that you try to find the real purpose behind your work so when rahu transits 10th house it is like saying you are always working it's just that you are working you may not even know why are you working but when ketu transits it's a it's a time to ask yourself that why at all i am working why am i working in this company do i like this company like doesn't mean i just like it on a superficial level but is it helping me to grow as an individual hmm? or is it helping me to uh, understand the things that which i should understand will it take me ahead in my career will i grow as an individual all right so if you feel that these things are not there in your life then now is a very good time to uh, go in, go and uh, learn new things actually so that you can upgrade your skill set you can upgrade your career you can not only just work like a like a robot or a machine but also find true purpose in, in it okay so it's very crucial that you really understand why you are doing what you are doing in life so it's good to do big things but it is also good if you understand all right so spend these 18 months in uh, cultivating your inner happiness uh, connecting to the mother if you are into real estate business and your dashas are positive uh, then you could have growth in real estate or if you are into some kind of vehicle business it is also good for you uh, if venus is linked especially and apart from that if you want to decorate your home then it's a very good time you can decorate spend more time with your family a fantastic time all right so utilize this time properly and as a part of remedies you should read the fourth canto and the 10th canto is very crucial for you 10th canto contains past times of lord krishna and fourth canto is also very interesting and you should chant these three mantras om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate narasimhaya then you should chant the purna mantra the purna mantra is uh, given down here i hope you can see it om apavitra pavitro va sarvam sarva avastham gato api va yas mare kundari kaacham sa bahya abhyantara suchi this mantra is very crucial for you okay So for you, the most important mantra is uh, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. This is the most important mantra because this is the mantra 
for speci specifically for Lord Krishna, which is the altar for moon, and Rahu is in the house of moon, which uh, I mean, where moon gets big belly, and fourth house is also originally the house of the moon. Okay, so therefore, this is a very crucial transit. So, my good wishes to all the Aquarius rising, and now let us move on to Pisces ascendance mm -hmm. last. So Pisces, Rahu transits your third house and Ketu transits your ninth house. And third house transit of Rahu is also considered to be one of the best, like 3, 6, 10 and 11. These are Upachya houses. Okay. So third house is a very interesting house. It's a Upachya house and it is also a Kama house. So third house is the house of uh, Guru, Guru Upadesh giving advice so if you're planning to write a book then it's the best time if you're planning to open a youtube channel it's a very good time if you're planning to open your uh, start blogging it's a very good time if you're planning to open your new website it's a very good time if you are planning to uh, if you already have a youtube channel and you are planning to add another technology to it so third house is the house of technology and rahu is the karaka for a uh, new new technology so uh, if you want to include new technologies, you know, so suppose you have a YouTube channel, you want to build a website or an app, mobile app, then very good time. It's a perfect time to do it. All right. So use this time properly. And K2 is in the ninth house. So it can happen that at times um, you might fall back to where K2 is and you might feel the need to go and take guidance or counseling or uh, listen to some guru or do some online courses okay for you it, it, it may be required so therefore uh, you can share your knowledge with others to whatever extent you can but at the same time don't forget that one day you will feel that you are exhausted so what do you do that time In that time you should go and listen to your gurus you can also listen to your father okay so, uh, reading the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam will really help you. And especially uh, reading the ninth canto also will help you. Because ninth canto has the story of Lord Ram. So, or you can also read Ramayana, right? <clears throat> and Vishnu Sahasranam is also very important for you. So, Vishnu Sahasranam is thousand names of Lord Vishnu. So, you read it once. That will take you 30 minutes. Then you chant this mantra. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Then you chant. Om Namo Bhagavate Narasimhaya. Okay. So, these two mantras, 108 times every day uh, morning in the mala you can do. That will be very good. And because Ketu is transiting your ninth house. So, therefore, it is very crucial that you do spiritual practices properly. Otherwise, you may feel that you are speaking too much. You are speaking so many things and you are getting a lot of followers. But then, what is, what is there inside? So, uh, this is a very good time for you to check the substance of what you actually have inside of you. Okay, so it is good to uh, say, but uh, you also have to make sure that you yourself are following that. So, Gain the necessary expertise from where K2 is. It's the ninth house. Gain from your gurus, from your uh, advisors, from your, uh, it could be astrologers also. And then you go and share your knowledge. You preach. And then you will see, because Rahu is in the third house and Mars is the third house. So the effect will be humongous. Okay. So you will be able to say things more clearly. You will be able to, uh, demonstrate that you actually can do things third house is the house of parakram okay. and therefore uh, it is now is the time that if you want to take some big leap regarding any area of your life you want to radically change something in your life now is the best time to do that because now third house will give you that necessary courage and that power by which you can make that change, which could have been difficult other ways, all right? So therefore, this transit of Rahu and Ketu in the 3-9 axis is very, very, very crucial for your courage. So, 
third house is courage and ninth house is where you are submissive when you be humble and you admit that you don't know and then you go and seek guidance from a guru therefore do what you can and at the same time keep upgrading yourself and by that you can do things which nobody can imagine all right so that is it from pisces ascendants wish you all the best to pisces lagna people all right thank you very much i'll see you again soon